World temperatures are rising because of human activities and climate change now threatens every aspect of human life. But what exactly is climate change? Climate in itself is the average weather in a place over many years. Meanwhile, climate change is a shift in those average conditions. The rapid climate change we are now seeing is caused by humans using oil, gas and coal for their homes, factories and transport. The UK is hosting a summit for world leaders called COP26 this month of November where countries will set out their carbon reduction plans for 2030. Many countries have pledged to get to net zero by 2050. This means reducing greenhouse gas emissions as much as possible and balancing out remaining emissions by absorbing an equivalent amount from the atmosphere. Experts agree that this is achievable but it will require governments, businesses and individuals to make big changes. Some of the examples of human activities that affect climate change includes deforestation, sand mining, brick making, poor waste disposal, use and dumping of plastic bags in water bodies on land, post burning are some of the examples of environmental problems. All these are left unchecked. Humans and nature will experience catastrophic warming with worsening drought, greater sea level rise and mass extinction of species we face a huge challenge the cop 26 global climate summit in glasgow in november is seen as crucial if climate change is to be brought under control almost 200 countries are being asked for their plans to cut emissions and it could lead to major changes to our everyday lives the effects of climate change. Um, our experience in the last 10 years has, um, has shown that um, there is increasing uh, occurrences of long dry spans and also um, floods in the instances of um, uh, malaria because it provided the breeding ground for mosquitoes. So when you go in our health facilities, uh, the, the number of reported cases of malaria increased in the period that uh, the floods occurred. In the year 2020, when rain and flood washed away many of the landforms, it continues to cause havoc on the lives of different species. It affected um, uh, latrines in these areas, all the latrines were damaged, meaning issues of sanitation and, uh, and health uh, was poor, affecting the livelihood of the people. Um, we have also seen uh, the, the death of, of fish in the rivers because of the flooding. What are the political leaders doing in order to see our environment is well protected? The country is changing from wet to dry, drought, and the nature of this global season where flood has invaded, especially our district in Ajumani. At the landing sites, when you go, everything is being destroyed. Ovens, Crops being planted have been destroyed. This is the issue of the climate change in Uganda. As a district in Ajumani, we engage and impress the project of government. When you look at Operation Well Creation, when you look at NADS, when you look at NUSAF, name it all, has been helping to improve to educate our people, to train them, to try to plant trees and food to change the life of Uganda, especially in the Germany district. Two, we have a lot of problems like the sand mining, the sand mining, the brick laying, the waste and the plastic bags around, the burning of bushes is really alarming in our country. 
And I know this is the solution that the government will help us. As a political leader and as a secretary for production, we go down there to sensitize them how to manage the resources on the ground. We engage them to plant more trees. When you do cultivation, you have to plant. When you cut trees down, you have to plant. What is the government stand in stopping illegal forest de destruction in Ajumani, Moyo, and Uganda at large? The government is doing a lot. These forest goods are being managed by two organs. Special the community land manages the national forest. We have three forest, different types of forest. We have the natural, uh, we, national forest, we have the community forest land, and we have the town council forest, which is being put by the district or the town council. Boost burning, brick making, and deforestation are some of the causes of climate change. What do you make of this? Together with the Go Green, and other agencies which comes to rescue us in our climate change. When we stand together and coordinate and speak of one voice for our community to, to plant trees, to use the, like, things like this maram, when being digged, has to fill it so that we shall not lose the fertility of our lands. Long dry spell and flooding has caused a lot of havoc on people who have settled along the river bank. What is the government doing in order to help these people from this kind of situation? From time to time in the, in the 10 years that I pointed out, there are also incidences of long, long dry spells. Incidentally in the same areas of, along the Nile, probably because it is a lowland, but also these are our dry pens, the dry corridors of the, of the district. So the sub-counties of Jaipi, Pachara, and uh, again Arinyapi get affected of long dry spells, which affects crop growing and of course people's livelihood. Encroachment by people to do cultivation on wetlands and cutting down of trees and also brick making in the swamps are some of the ways that lead to climate change. What is the government saying on such issues? Um, there is increasing degradation of uh, the land cover uh, as a result of um, charcoal burning, opening land for agriculture, uh, encroaching on uh, wetlands and uh, river banks by people who normally uh, do cultivation to culture. Yes, as a, as a district, we have tried to create awareness to the people um, so that they can leave the lower the lower areas and probably get uh, higher grounds where they can probably settle and do construction, especially of uh, property and so on. So that when this uh, increasing uh, incidences of uh, climate change occurs, they are not uh, strongly affected. And then in the growth centers, there are problems of shortage of land. People are encroaching wetlands because there's no adequate land in the towns, the trading centers, and in, in the process, they destroy the wetlands. So those are the causes. And uh, also brick making is uh, brick burning is a common practice here. And there are a lot of construction activities in our sub-region because of the various development programs that are there. So people are producing bricks and burning them uh, by cutting wood, firewood. The same havoc in the year 2022, the month of late July and August, have again hit the sub-county of Arinyapi, Ajuman district in the village of Ogolo, South and North. In Liri, Paris, many households were displaced, livestock lost lives, farmland washed away by running water. Where I am standing 
is the road that leads to Ogolo Health Center 2. It is located in Ogolo South Village, Liri, Paris, Arunyapi, Sub County, Ajumani District. The road that leads to Ogolo Health Center 2 is covered by water since the heavy downpour and emerging of River Tete that broke its banks a month ago and has become impassable to all species. Mr. Kabusu Anthony is the local council one chairman for Ogolo South Village whom we have interacted with has decided to take us through the affected areas for the two villages. This is the kind of havoc the rain has caused on the people of Ogolo South and North Village as we move through the muddy roads to the affected areas. This is the first home from the direction we took which was heavily affected. They have been displaced by the flood. On the first day of the flood, this house you are seeing was submerged into water and now due to the flood they have shifted to another place to take a refuge. A good Samaritan decided to give them one house to stay in temporary as they await government or any assistance from anyone. Moving through the villages, these are some of the houses holes affected by the flood. According to the local council one, the flooding was majorly caused by two factors. First is the breakage of the tributaries of River Tete which is just half a kilometer from their residence and secondly is the too much downpour of the rain in the months starting July to August which has caused all this suffering to them. The heavy downpour in the month of July and August has also caused many losses of properties which range from latrines, houses, shelters, farms and many more. Finally, after moving through the two villages of Ogolo South and North, we have landed at the gate of Health Center. This is Ogolo Health Center 2, constructed under the Northern Uganda Rehabilitation Program NURIP. This building was constructed through a grant to the government by the European Union and commissioned by then the State Minister for Northern Uganda Honorable David Wakikona on 3rd March 2009. The place right here you are seeing was a farmland for the staff of the health center but now has become a stream. Perhaps as some locals we interacted with has given it a name Lake Odega. The chairman then led us through the water to the other side of the lake. This water body has separated the place of residence for the staff and the facility. For one to cross to the other side you need a gumboot to access the building. As we move through the water one will definitely wonder how these staff are coping up with lives in this place. What you are seeing over there was the compound of the resident but now has been submerged into water. Children in this homestead used to play on this bare dry ground but now they can't enjoy their rights to free and safe environment anymore. What health hazards are they facing? Where your eyes are seeing from afar through the mango tree is the staff house for the nurses. When the rain started at night while they were asleep only to wake up around 2 a.m. their rooms were filled with water. This is also the behind part of the house where the staff after hectic days work could sit and enjoy the fresh air that comes from the river but it is no more all covered with water. When asked why they have shifted the local council once said they were given a house near his place for meantime as help awaits them. Did we ask ourselves is this the end of the world? Do our human activities bring about all these problems? What exactly has brought about this weather condition? Is it a big question for us to answer? What is the government saying in helping such people? Does the central government only focus on other regions affected by such calamities? The politicians, religious leaders and all work of lives, what are their roles in helping such people? And what are the roles of the stakeholders in ending climate? change in the region, district and the entire country. All what is happening now is the effect of climate change on the environment. What exactly is climate change? Climate change refers to significant long-term changes in the global climate and the global climate is the connected system of sun, earth and oceans, wind, rain and snow, forests, deserts and savannas and everything people do 
to the element of a place or an area can't be determined by its rainfall and changing temperatures during the year and so on but the global climate is more than the average climate of specific places meanwhile a global warming is the slow increase in the average temperature of the earth atmosphere because an increased amount of the energy heat striking the earth from the sun is being trapped in the atmosphere and not radiated out into space the earth atmosphere has always acted like a greenhouse to capture the sun's heat ensuring that the earth has enjoyed temperatures that permitted the emergency of life forms as we know them including humans ironically the best evidence of this may come from a terrible cooling event that took place some 1500 years ago two massive volcanic eruptions one year after another placed so much black dust into the upper atmosphere that little sunlight could penetrate temperatures plunged crops failed people died of starvation and black death started its march as the dust slowly fell to earth the sun was again able to warm the world and life returned to normal today we have the opposite problem today the problem is not the too little sun warmth is reaching the earth but that too much is being trapped in our atmosphere according to un sources they said there are some causes and effect of climate change on human beings and plant and animal habitat generating power is the first cause of climate change generating electricity and heat by burning fossil fuels causes a large chunk of global emissions most electricity is still generated by burning coal oil and gas which produce carbon dioxide and nitrous oxide powerful greenhouse gases that blanket the earth and trap the sun's heat globally a bit more than a quarter of electricity comes from wind solar and other renewable sources which as opposed to fossil fuels emit little to no greenhouse gases or pollutants into the air industries producing emissions mostly from burning fuels to produce energy for making things like cement iron steel electronics plastics clothes and other goods mining and other industrial process also release gases as does the construction industries cutting down trees is the most commonest happening now as it creates a people who cut down trees create farms of pastures or for other reason causes emissions since trees when they are cut release the carbon they have been storing each year approximately 12 million hectares of forest are destroyed since forests absorb carbon dioxide destroying them also limits nature's ability to keep emissions out of the atmosphere deforestation together with agriculture and other land use changes is responsible for roughly a quarter of global greenhouse gas emission and now uh, using transportation in our daily lives are uh, most cars trucks ships and planes run on fossil fuels that makes transportation a major contributors of greenhouse gases especially carbon dioxide emissions road vehicles account for the largest part due to the combustion of petroleum based products like gasoline in internal combustion engines but emissions from ship and planes continue to grow transport account for nearly one quarter of global energy related carbon dioxide emissions and trends points to a significant increase energy use for transport over the coming years and others include are producing food causes emissions of carbon dioxide methane and other greenhouse gases in various ways including through deforestation and clearing of land for agriculture and grazing digestion by cows and sheep the production and use of fertilizers and manure for growing crops and the use of energy to run farm equipment or fishing boats usually with fossil fuels all these make 
makes food production a major contributor to climate change and greenhouse gas emissions also come from packaging and distributing food powering buildings globally residential and commercial buildings consumes over half of all electricity as they continue to draw on coal oil and natural gas for heating and coiling they emit significant quantities of greenhouse gas emissions growing energy demand for heating and cooling with rising air conditioner ownership as well as increased electricity consumption for lighting appliances and connected devices has contributed to a rise in energy related carbon dioxide emissions from buildings in recent years your home and use of power how you move around what you eat and how much you throw away all contribute to greenhouse gas gas emissions so does the consumption of goods such as clothing electronics and plastics a large chunk of global greenhouse gas emissions are linked to private households our lifestyles have a profound impact on our planet the wealthiest bear the greatest responsibility the richest one percent of the global population combined account for more greenhouse gas emissions than the poorest 50 percent hotter temperatures as greenhouse gas concentrations rise so does the global surface temperature the last decade 2011 to 2020 is the warmest on record since the 1980s each decade has been warmer than the previous one nearly all land areas are seeing more hot days and heat waves higher temperature increases heat related illness and make working outdoors more difficult wildfire start more easily and spread more rapidly when conditions are hotter temperatures in the attic have warmed at least twice as fast as the global average more severe storms destructive storms have become more intense and more frequent in many regions as temperatures rise more moistures evaporates which exhibits extreme rainfall and flooding causing more destructive storms the frequency and extent of tropical storm is also affected by the warming ocean silo hurricanes and typhoons feed on warm waters at the ocean surface such storms often destroy homes and communities causing death and huge economic losses increased drought climate change is changing water availability making it scarce in more regions global warming escapades water shortages in already water stressed regions and is leading to an increased risk of agriculture growth affecting crops and ecological growth increasing the vulnerability of ecosystems growth can also steer destructive sand and dust storms that can move billions of tons of sand across continents deserts are expanding reducing land for growing food many people now face the threat of not having enough water on regular Basis. The ocean soaks up most of the heat from global warming. The rate at which the ocean is warming strongly increased over the past two decades across all depth of the ocean. As the ocean warms, its volume increases since water expands as it gets warmer, melting ice sheets all cause sea levels to rise, threatening coastal and island communities. In addition, the ocean absorbs carbon dioxide, keeping it from the atmosphere. But more carbon dioxide makes the ocean more acidic, which endangers marine life and coral reefs. Climate change poses risk to the survival of species on land and in the ocean. This risk increases as temperature climb. Excavated by climate change, the world is losing species at a rate 1,000 times greater than at any other time in recorded human history one million species at risk of becoming extinct within the next few decades forest fires extreme weather and in invasive pests and diseases are among many threat related climate change some species will be able to relocate and survive but others will not changes in the climate and increases in extreme weather events are among reasons behind a global rise in hunger and poor nutrition 
on fisheries, crops and livestock may be destroyed or become less productive, with the ocean becoming more acidic. Marine resources that feed billions of people are at risk. Changes in snow and ice cover in many Arctic regions have disrupted food supplies from heading, hunting and fishing. Heat stresses can diminish water and grasslands for grazing, causing decline crop yields and affecting livestock. Climate change is the single biggest health threat facing humanity. Climate impacts are already harming health through air pollution, diseases, extreme weather event force displacement, pressure on mental health, and increased hunger and poor nutrition in places where people cannot grow or find sufficient food. Every year, environmental factors take the lives of around 13 million people. Changing weather patterns are expanding diseases and extreme weather events increases death and make it difficult for healthcare system to keep up. And lastly, climate change increases the factors that put and keep people in poverty. Floods may sweep away urban slums, destroying homes and livelihoods. Heat can make it difficult to work in outdoor jobs. Water scarcity may affect crops. Over the past decade, 2010 to 2019, weather-related events displaced an estimated 23 3.1 million people on average each year, leaving many more vulnerable to poverty. Most refugees come from countries that are most vulnerable and least ready to adapt to the impacts of climate change.